Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have a Spark Story. This is a documentary that is from 2021. It's an hour and 28 minutes long, and it is, of course, talks about the, some of the animators at uh, Pixar. This uh, focuses on two in particular, uh, Afton Corbin and Luis Gonzalez, and the two of them, uh, over the a couple years ago, imagine just before 2021, uh, 2020 and 2021 uh, is when their their shorts were released, called 20-something from Afton and uh, Nona from Lewis. The two of them uh, are, are the main focus of this documentary uh, about how animated shorts through the Spark program come to be and who they are as creators, as storytellers, as animators, and uh, how they got there. This is, more than anything, uh, uh, kind of an inspirational uh, documentary that says, you know what, these are just normal kids. They, they weren't like just people who had all the biggest connections in the industry and just got a job just learning, uh, animating just at the top of their game. No, they, these guys, she worked at McDonald's for a while and he was uh, tagging things with uh, members of his gang for a time in the 80s and 90s. Uh, didn't do too well at school either. And he didn't go to art school and she um, tried to get into Caltech. Uh, Caltech? No, Cal Arts. She tried to get into Cal Arts, created by Walt Disney, and couldn't get in. So uh, they had a whole lot of stuff that, uh, that went against them, uh, even though they had obvious talent and obvious ambition and desire to, to uh, create, just to create art. Uh, in fact, Lewis, at one point, he didn't even really consider animation. He just wanted to make comic books. And how did he, how did he get there? Well, this is what this documentary is all about. How did Afton go from making little web cartoons uh, that she didn't even think were that important as compared to the things she wanted to do, but got her seen by so many others who related to her stories, her little cartoons, and yeah. It's the thing you least expect that somehow can connect you to a larger world and bring you into a place like Pixar arguably probably the the most successful, consistently successful animation studio in the world. Well, Walt Disney, yeah, but still, let's let's just say, let's, we can, they're separate, but we can sort of combine them, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if the people at <laughs> Disney and Pixar will agree. But either way, uh, Afton Corbin and Luis Gonzalez, they are not the only two people who created animated shorts at, at, at Disney, uh, at, at Pixar. Far from it. Uh, there are so many, but it's at this time point in time that Pete Docter, who's the chief creative officer, created uh, movies like Up, uh, Monsters, Inc., and um, Inside Out. He directed those films. Uh, he, he's he, he, You get to see him in a lot throughout this, uh, talking about the the whole program, and you get to watch uh, these, you get to see how these animated features, uh, sorry, these animated shorts come to be, uh, as long as, as well as seeing their stories, which is, one, it's, it's, it's stories of inclusion and stories of representation and diversity uh, in, for two people who are joining a, <laughs> a group of animators who have historically been old white men. There's a reason why Disney, not necessarily Pixar, but Disney has a group of veterans they call what, the old, just the nine old guys or something like that. I can't remember. I'm sorry for forgetting. Don't kill me. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a realm that has not always had uh, a, a, a diverse series of faces as their lead characters. In fact, uh, I think Joe from uh, the movie Soul was the first black lead actor in a Pixar film, the lead character in a Pixar film. And that was, what, just 2021? 20, 20, yeah, for a feature, for a Pixar feature. So this talks about that a little bit, but some of the most interesting things you're going to find uh, beyond uh, growth culturally, you're going to see 
some stuff that, that really tells you what goes into making these films uh, and how sometimes you can go down a path that you're not really expecting and derail, derail everything. In fact, there's a moment in this that might be somewhere in the making of, of Inside Out Blu-ray or whatever, but in this you can see that at one point the story for Inside Out was a completely different path for Joy and for Riley and everything else. And when they realized they had to change a certain thing, they had to scrap a good chunk of the movie to redo these things. The same thing can happen when you're dealing with shorts. Uh, even Like I said, even though it's only four, seven, eight minutes long, it's it's a lot. And uh, it's, it's, it's a lot to take into consideration because they don't necessarily have the resources, oh, of the major motion picture that's being built. You know, that's Pixar is, you know, making Toy Story five or six or something, whatever, how many Toy Stories there are now. Um, <clears throat> you understand they get the, the full resources of the company when they're making a new one of those. A little short, made with a director and a producer and people, that uh, animators that they have to pitch to, uh, doesn't necessarily get the attention, but still can produce some amazing results in two very different stories. Nona and 20-something. If you haven't already seen them, we've already talked about them on this series at some point, randomly, probably at least two years ago, I think. Uh, uh, in fact, 20-something was our very first episode of 2023. So, yeah. January 1st, 2023. Over a year ago now. And we saw Nona even before that. So, yeah, it's, a, it's I, I highly recommend this. If you're if you're an artist or an animator or somebody who's like, oh man, I wish I could do what they do at Pixar or Disney Animation or anywhere. I mean, Lewis here, you have to understand that this may just seem like, oh, he's a new kid in the block. No, he's been around for a while. He worked, he got his break at Warner Animation under Brad Bird doing the Iron Giant. Yeah, the Iron Giant. He was one of the concept artists and designers for a lot of what we know as the Iron Giant. The Iron Giant. The Iron Giant, by the way, not a Disney film. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you want to see a, an amazing, amazing animated film, or just film in general, The Iron Giant. Watch it. If you have not watched it yet, it's from 1999. Almost nobody saw it in the theaters. I had to drive. I lived... I lived in Virginia at the time. I had to drive practically to Washington, D.C. to find a theater that was even playing it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> right right across the Potomac, actually. Right? Yeah. Yeah, right, right along the Potomac. So I say, uh, if you get a chance, seriously, Iron, watch Iron Giant. But also watch this. Again, artists, creators, if you want to see everything that goes on behind the scenes of what... A, per, a single person's idea. I mean, yeah, yeah, Toy Story and Cars and all these things, they do come from a single person's idea or a group of people's ideas, and sometimes it's over-marketed to a certain degree to create something that is, you know, pleasant for the mass audiences to consume. But there's also stories that are very personal, and that's where you find the spark shorts and uh, you get to see Afton's and Lewis's stories come to life. And I say... You get a chance, watch their shorts, 20-something and Nona, right here on Disney+, Plus, and then watch this documentary. And you'll have a better appreciation for everything that goes into it, even for something so small. So, highly recommend it. Give that a shot. But to, right now, let's pick tomorrow's episode. 312. <coughs> 312. Come on. Overshot it. Oh my gosh. <coughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Ugh. It's taken forever for this to be selected. But I can't believe it. This day is finally here. When I first started this out, uh, five years ago, it started in 2019. Uh, the, on the day that Disney Plus started, one of the first three, four, I don't know. It was one of the first movies. I'll double check that probably tomorrow. But one of the first things I ever watched, that which, which was a movie on Disney Plus, 
was the sequel to this movie, <laughs> which I have not seen yet. Um, it was one of those things like, hey, it randomly got randomly selected, so it's... I'm going to watch the sequel before I watch the original. And I've been waiting, waiting forever. And I recommended the sequel so hard to people because I did not expect to like it. I recommended it so hard that friends of mine just like sat down and just watched both of them back to back. So they've seen more of this than I have. But we are going to be watching the original, the first of the two movie saga of Teen Beach Movie. Yes. Yes, yes, I know, I know. It's a, it's very much a Disney song and dance kind of movie. It's but it involves time travel. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's it's got a it's got some character to it. Uh and it's uh, at least Teen Beach 2. Maybe this is garbage. I have no idea. Kenny Ortega I think is in charge. I think he might be directing this or he's he's in charge of at least the, the choreography and the dancing and the songs and everything else. But Kenny Ortega, you know him from High School Musical and all, just all the other song and dance stuff from the, the 2000s and beyond. Uh, yeah. And a, whole, a lot of other stuff, which is now slipping my mind. I want to say it out loud, but I can't say it. Anyway, tomorrow, Teen Beach Movie, finally. Teen Beach Movie is what we're watching next on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.